Hey there, um, I wanted to make a quick little video about MLA citation um, because as we move into this next essay, we want to make sure that um, we are citing things correctly so that we are acknowledging where our borrowed source information comes from and also so that we're not plagiarizing. So if you have done citation in the past, um, if it's been a long time, we are now using MLA 8, so you have to make sure to use MLA 8. So if it's been a while, things may look a little bit different. If you are familiar with like APA formatting or other kinds like that, um, it's like learning to drive somebody else's car. You know, the windshield wipers may operate differently or the buttons on the stereo are different, but the car still drives the same. Gas pedal on the right, brake on the left. Um, so in the module two packet, there's this MLA citation format packet. And I want to just kind of show you the sections of this so that it can help you as you are um, working on our essay. So the, the main thing is that any source information that we borrow needs cited. If you directly quote it or if you summarize it, doesn't matter. A lot of people think you only have to cite when you borrow the words that somebody else wrote. That's not true. If you borrow their information, their ideas, their data, and you summarize it in your own words, you absolutely have to cite it too, always. If the information comes from outside your brain, you gotta tell us where it came from. So citation is two things. It's the in-text citation that's in your sentences and it's all the stuff on the works cited page. So the format packet talks about the works cited page first. So this is the list at the end of your essay where you list the publication information for all the sources. So these have very specific formats. So at the bottom of page one, there's kind of a little sample. You can see how the works cited page has a title, works cited, but it's not bold or underlined or anything. We, and it's part of your essay. So if you've got five pages of essay, this is page six. You can see how it's alphabetized. We don't generally alphabetize by articles. So that's why an inconvenient truth is being alphabetized by the I, not the A. You can see how these have the, the hanging indent. I will post a, um, a little tutorial about how to do the hanging indent because it can drive you crazy. Um, if you are going to use a um, citation aid, like citationmachine.net or bibme.org, I don't care, that's fine, but double check it. They give wrong answers all the time. It'll put your title all in capital letters. I'll mark that wrong. Um, it won't italicize the name of your website. I'll mark that wrong. So use those if you want, but double check them against this guide or another MLA 8 guidebook. You can see looking at this that some of these titles are in quotation marks, some of these are in italics. This is not um, random. So if something is whole and unto itself, like a book or a movie, um, that goes in italics. If it's a piece of the whole, like one poem in an anthology or one episode of a TV show, one song on an album, the piece goes in quotation marks. So if you take, for instance, like Dark Side of the Moon, if you're talking about the song, it goes in quotation marks. If you're talking about the whole album, it goes in italics. Right? If you're just talking about the actual dark side of the actual moon, <laughs> right? it doesn't need anything. So um, on the works cited page, we alphabetize. We do not put the entries according to the order that we use them. So the rest of this, you can see on page two, there's a one through 10 of the pieces of information the citations are looking for. You are not going to have all 10 of these. I don't think I've ever seen a citation that has all 10 of these. So you can see how some of these end with a period or a comma. That's not arbitrary. That's important. So um, if you don't have an author, skip it. Start with number two. Don't put anonymous, unknown, N-A. Only put an author there if you have somebody's name. If it says staff writer, that's not a person's name. If it says AP, that's the Associated Press, we don't have the actual person's name. So if you don't have an author, skip it. And you would start with number two. You can see there on number one, it tells you what to do if you have multiple writers, things like that. Um, the title of the source, it may be something in italics, like that example there, The Hummingbird House, because that's just a book. It doesn't have little pieces, um, so it's just the book. Some of these, like the other ones, the How to Make Vegetarian Chili, the Beyonce song, they're pieces of a whole, so those are in quotation marks. 
Um, number three is asking for the title of the container. So if you're citing a piece, like a song, or an article in a magazine, well, that's contained somewhere, right? So it's the name of the container that's holding it. So that's what number three is asking. Um, you can also see there, it gets a little complicated if your container is in a bigger container, like those little Russian nesting dolls. So for instance, if you look at that one in the middle of page three, 94 Meetings is the name of the uh, episode. Parks and Recreation is the container. It's the TV show, right? But we're watching this TV show in the electronic container of Netflix. So we have to acknowledge that Netflix brought us this show. So you can see how we have all the information about the Parks and Recreation episode. And then we get all the information about Netflix. So on rare instances, like if you're using an electronic database, like you will for your library exercise, you may have to give all the journal article information and then the database information like it has a secondary container you'll never have three and this isn't that common but you will for the electronic databases other contributors are if you have editors translators um, that's sometimes common if you don't have any of that just skip it right if there's this information isn't there skip it number five is asking for the version so if it's like the third edition of the book you would put that there um, number six is asking for the number. So if you're looking at something that has a volume or a volume and an issue, you would put that here. Um, excuse me. Um, MLA is asking, even if the journal you're looking at says volume and issue, you put volume and number here, which is kind of stupid, but that's how it is. The publisher is the person publishing it and making it, or the company publishing it and making it available to the public. So. Um, you can find that kind of information if you're looking at a print book in the copyright page in the front. Um, magazines, websites, you're not going to usually have publishers. The publication date, so that's where you, uh, when it was published. If you only have a year, put the year. If you have, if it says like spring, summer 2012, put the spring, summer. If for like a, a website, it has the exact date that it was 18th of September 2017 put the full date if you have it and if you don't have a date skip it right the location is not talking about cities and states the location is the location of the source in the container so if you're looking at an article in a newspaper the location would be the page number that that article was on in the container of the newspaper if you're looking at the website it would be the URL that the article is contained on the website. So location, it's kind of confusing. You think location, you think geography. It's not talking about that. It's talking about where the piece is located in the container. So it would be like your URL and your page numbers. Optional elements, um, the only thing I'm gonna ask you to do for our class is date of access. So put a little asterisk there or something because we know how quickly the internet can change. So um, put the date that you looked at the internet. The printed book isn't gonna change, but the internet will. So put the access date and you can see how it says accessed. And then we put the day, the month, and the year. So um, that's the, the information for the Works Cited page. Starting on page eight, it talks about the in-text citation. So this is what goes in your sentences. Generally, um, this would be like the author's last name and the page number, but what do we do for the sources that don't have authors or page numbers, right? So the in-text citation are like little stickers that we stick on every single piece of borrowed information. So that it says Smith 42, I can look at your works cited page and see the publication information for whatever Smith wrote, go read the exact same thing that you were reading. Um, so it's like putting a little flag in each piece of information because the reader needs to look at your essay and know every single idea. This is your idea. This was theirs. This was hers. This was theirs. This is yours. We need to be able to know whose information and ideas every single one is. Um, so this talks about what to do in your sentences. If you have a page number, you always put it in parentheses. The author's last name can go in parentheses or um, in your sentence. And you see the example there with the, the Yates book of plays. If you don't have an author's last name, you cite to the article title. So the article title can go in either of those places. Um, if, if you look on page nine, there's some examples here. 
if your source is quoting another source and you're like, that's a great quote, I want it too. Um, we have to make sure to acknowledge who said the quote and what, which one of your sources you got it from. So the example here that says Snoop Dogg said asparagus was the best th green thing in the fridge. It says QTDN, quoted in Dumas 8. We have to know that it was Snoop Dogg who said it, and or else if you didn't tell us that, we would think it was Dumas. And we can't put Snoop Dogg in the parentheses because he didn't write the article that we're reading. So there's um, those kinds of um, information there. Make sure to um, cite every piece of borrowed information, whether you um, summarize it or quote it. And you have to have both parts of your citation, the in-text, and the works cited page for it to be correct. So make sure to ask me any questions you have. If you use any online tutorials or anything like that, make sure it's MLA 8, make sure it's correct. And if there's any kinds of uh, concerns, let me know.